Thank you, Jesus. Somebody wave your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord with a wave of those beautiful hands. Bless his name. Bless his name. Give him the glory due to him. Somebody thank him from the depth of your heart. Thank him for your life. Thank him for your family. Thank him for every blessing of the Lord. Praise he the Lord from whom all blessing flows. Give him the glory. He is behind every good thing hap that happened in your life. Not only in the month of June, but ever since the beginning of the year. Join me, thank him. Join me, praise him. Join me, glorify his name. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. He has done great things. Bless his name. Give him the glory. Thank him. Thank him for multitude that is gathering into his church. Thank him for this prophetic season of the midst of the year. Thank him for using you. Thank him for walking through you. Thank him for saving souls through you. Bless his name. Thank him and thank him and thank him. Thank him and thank him and thank him and glorify his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I just want to say, Baba O Eshe. I just want to say, Baba, Baba O Eshe. I just want to say, I just want to say, Baba O Eshe. I just want to say, Baba O Lift up your hand and say, I just want to say, Baba O Eshe. I just want to say, Baba, Baba O Say, I just want to say, Baba, oh, I just want to say, Baba, oh, I just want to say, I just want to say, Baba, oh, I just want to say, Baba, oh. Thank you, Jesus. Please lift up your two hands. Having given thanks to God for the month of June and all the months that preceded it in the year 2020, I decree that this month shall be your month of perfection. This month shall be sweat free for you. It shall be struggle and stress free for you. This month, you will not look for things, things will come to you. This month shall be most restful for you. This month, no calamity shall befall you, no plague will come near your dwelling. This month, Satan will not like anything that belongs to you. He will see what belongs to you and run away. This month, the glory of the Lord shall cover you. The beauty of the Lord shall be your portion. This month, it shall be said concerning you that you are filled with testimonies. All you lay your hands on to do this month shall prosper. The message of prosperity shall become a reality in your life. Be blessed of the Lord. All that bless you this month shall be blessed. He who causes you shall be cursed. Your going out and coming in is blessed. So shall it be. Everyone who believe in this prophecy and many more, raise your voice, pray in the Holy Ghost right now as you drink into the blessing. Pray in the Holy Ghost as you drink into the blessing. So shall it be for you in Jesus' wonderful name we are praying. 
Before you take your seat, ask God to send his word the first day of this month. Send your word to me that will energize me. On this first day of the week of spiritual emphasis, Lord, send your word to renew my strength. Send your word to energize me. Send your word to deepen my spirituality. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' glorious name we are praying. Please take your seat, and if you can, your big hand for Jesus. Hallelujah. You may also wish to turn to your neighbors, to your right, to your left. Happy, happy new month to your neighbors. Well, another neighbor is expecting you to say that. Joyfully do so as you are wishing them well. It's coming back to you. In Jesus' glorious name. Amen. It is my year of breaking limits. I didn't hear that very well. It shall be so for you. A little while ago in this service, the prophetic theme of the month, as received by God's servant, the apostle over this commission, was delivered to us, caption, financial dominion is my heritage in Christ. And I know somebody would like to say that. Join me right now. Financial fortune is my heritage in in Christ. Say it again. One more time if you can. What does that mean? You will never beg again. You will never be counted among borrowers again. You will not scratch the bottom of the pot again. Your storehouse will never run dry again. Somebody who will testify is saying aloud, Amen. Amen. Financial fortune is my heritage in Christ. Our text for this theme is Isaiah chapter 51, verses 1, 2, 3. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence you are in, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. And I mean, look unto Abraham. Abraham is that rock. Abraham is that stone. Abraham is your father. And unto Sarah that bear you, for I called him alone and blessed him. Everyone that God calls, he blesses. Are you called of God? I didn't hear you very well. Yes. What does that mean? Say, me, I'm blessed. Amen. Say it again. Amen. God called you to bless you and to increase you. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all our waste places. And he will make a wilderness like Eden. Is that you? Yes. No more suffering in the wilderness for you. Yes. Now, step into enjoyment of the Eden. Desert shall be like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. All through this month, joy and gladness shall be found in your habitation. Yeah. Say louder amen to them. Yeah. Sorrow and mourning are driven away from your camp. Yeah. Our teaching series for midweek services, this being part 1A, is caption, understanding the fundamentals of kingdom wealth. Understanding the fundamentals. Fundamentals also mean foundation. You can't build a house without laying foundation. You can't understand complexities without first understanding the fundamentals. The basic rules and knowledge for kingdom wealth. Please note, kingdom wealth is different from earthly riches. The people of the world have their methods. In this kingdom, we have our rules. You know, in every game, rules must be observed. 
If you don't, you'll be regarded as running foul. This kingdom is ruled by rules. This kingdom is governed by principles which leads to the power. Many people want the kingdom power, but they don't want to follow the kingdom principles. Supernatural order of blessing upon our life. Genesis chapter 8, verses 20 to 22. Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And what happened? And the Lord smelled as sweet savours. Spiritual transaction. You give, God smells it. When you give, ushers collect it from you. But God receives it from you. When it comes to the subject of giving, God is personally involved to receive it. God smelled it. He didn't send anybody to do that. When Abraham gave, Genesis 22, 15 to 22, the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham and said, Stop. He came the second time. Your giving makes heaven restless. He came the second time and began to swear to him. When Solomon gave, 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 3 to 13, after he gave his offering, God could not sleep. God appeared to him that same night, that same night in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon, not the following day, in a dream by night. And God asked him, what I ask, what I shall give thee. Giving makes God restless, planning the next thing to give to you. Real givers don't ask God for things. No, because it's a transaction. Give and it shall be given to you. Real givers don't beg God for things. When I see people praying and cracking their head and begging God for money, I want to find out, is he a giver and often than none? He's not a giver. The more you give, the less you pray. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8. He is there to receive it. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he received them, of whom it is witness, that he liveth. So when you give, it goes to heaven. It goes to heaven. It doesn't stop in the church. It goes to heaven. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two, demand for guaranteed returns on our son's seed. We must sow our seeds willingly. 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 Don't be cajoled to give. Don't be forced to give. Please let me tell you this. Anywhere you go in this world, including when you come to this church, whatever time you feel somebody is pressing you to give, don't give it. Giving is not by force. Acceptable giving is not by force. It's by willingness. And willingness will show in your cheerfulness. If you are willing, you will smile. That you are frowning is indication you are not willing. So put it in your pocket. Put it back. For God loves a cheerful giver who expresses his cheerfulness in his willingness. Say loud, amen. amen. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. If there be forced a willing mind, a willing mind, then it is acceptable. If there is no willing mind, ushers may collect it, offering collectors may collect it, but it is not accepted. Exodus 35, verse 4, 16, and 22. The condition is that when you give, take it from only those who are willing. Only those who are willing. Verses 16 and 22. Take it only from those who are willing. Somebody say amen. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 17. 17. 
if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. If I do it willingly, then my reward is guaranteed. The return is guaranteed only when it is done out of willingness. As we close tonight, let us identify two enemies of covenant wealth. Two enemies of covenant wealth. You have to deal with them if you don't want to hinder yourself from enjoying covenant wealth. In Songs of Solomon chapter 2 verse 15, he tells us about the little, little foxes. What makes great things to fail is usually small, small things. Little, little things. Little, little things. So you must mind little things to enjoy great things. Mind little things if you want to enjoy great things. Number one is lack of financial integrity. Wuru-wuru, mago-mago, double-tongue, lying, cheating, deceiving people, robbing people, bribery and corruption, financial integrity. If your hands are not clean, your pocket will leak. If your hands are not clean, your pocket will leak. When it comes to money, people will cheat. They will lie. They will deceive. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 11. Look at the wolves. As the partridge seated on eggs and archered them not, so he that getteth riches and not in a right way, he shall leave them in the midst of his days and at his end he shall be a fool. Financial integrity makes a fool of its victim shall be a fool. If you get it in or in Ori, you will end in horrors and sorrows. If you get it in a hurry, you will end in horrors and sorrows. Proverbs 28, 21. To have respect to a person is not good for, for a piece of bread that man will transgress. Be careful. Proverbs 13, 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. It may look like an heap today, but it will soon diminish. It will soon reduce. You may get it quick, it will finish quick. If it is by crookedness, beware of financial impropriety. Financial integrity is key to the future. Somebody say amen. You can as well take Luke 16, 11, and 12. Number two enemy is idleness. Beware of idleness lifestyle. Don't be idle. Idleness lotters round. Proverbs 10 4. He becometh poor. The word becometh means a process leading to an end. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. Now, it is being said that if you are hard working, you will be 50% ahead of your peers. You will be 50% ahead of your peers. God does not bless laziness. God does not bless idleness. That's why he says, whatsoever your hand findeth to do, do it. Do what you find until you find what you like. Do what you find until you find what you like. I can't imagine myself sitting down, sleeping, eating, 
waking up and doing nothing. It's a cause. It will interest you to know that God is committed to blessing only the works of your hand. Psalm 1 verse 3, He blesses only the works of your hand. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. So if you do nothing, you'll prosper nowhere. Say to the righteous, it shall be well with you, for you shall eat the fruit of your labor. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give you rain unto the land in this season, and to bless the works of your hand. What will God bless? What will God bless? Raise your hand. God will bless the work of my hand. He will so bless you that you will lend to nations and you shall not borrow. If you are lazy, you cannot make it in this kingdom. It's my prayer tonight that these enemies around your life shall be destroyed. Beginning from this season, you will see the blessing of God upon the works of your hands. This ministry did not climb up to where it is today in idleness, but in hard work, hard work, hard work. If you don't want to end in poverty, speak to your hand to work. God works through your hand to make you rich. You will never be poor again. I say you will never be poor again. If you are blessed by this word, give God a big hand. Thank you, Jesus. Now, until you become a member of a family, you don't enjoy the heritage of that family. So also it is in this kingdom, until you become a child of God, you cannot be blessed. Satan is behind you if you are not born again to destroy everything you are building up. Everything because he's a thief according to Jesus. John 10.10 10. The thief commit to steal, to kill and to destroy. Satan is a killer, is a destroyer. When you give your life to Jesus, he gives you access into the covenant world. Tonight I know there are individuals who are seated here your conscience is telling you you need to surrender your life to Jesus you lack peace you lack joy you are troubled every day confused tied down held down by drugs and other influences of the devil the things you don't like to do is pushing you to do them tonight you want to say to Jesus have mercy on me I want to be born again I want to surrender my life to God if you are there making that decision stand to your feet right now it will be the delight of the church to pray for you and to pray with you. Maybe you are also there, you gave your life to Jesus before, but you are backsliding or you are backsliding. You know it. The love of God in your heart is not as hot as it used to be. Tonight, you want to say to Jesus, I'm returning home. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. And all of you who are standing up, I'd like you to take a step, come to the altar. If you came to church with anything like Bible, like bag, take it with you. Come to the altar here right now. Church, let's give Jesus a big hand as we receive them as we receive them you are seated there you know you are not born again heaven is real don't joke with it if you miss heaven it is straight to hell god didn't create you as a candidate of hell you are going through things and you know it why don't you come for jesus to set you free to give you hope to give you a new beginning if you feel you are a terrible sinner jesus will forgive you right now all of you who are coming come quickly Come quickly, come and receive salvation. Jesus will register your name now in the book of life. He will set you free from every influence that is holding you down. God bless you. Come again. Church, give, a Jesus, give Jesus a big hand as we receive all of these precious people into the kingdom of God right now. Thank you, mighty Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. All of you in front here, please put your hand, your right hand on your heart. As you pray this simple prayer with me, say with me, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me forgive my sins make me a child of god from today i receive your power to follow you all the days of my life thank you for saving me 
in Jesus name amen Heavenly Father, we decree that these ones be established in the faith, Satan having no more power over them, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Please open your eyes. Congratulations for your decision. Go with our church officials in this direction. God bless you. God bless you, church. A big hand for them right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you are watching us from wherever, you can see on the screen what you need to do just text yes jesus if you give your life to jesus indicating your name the town or the city where you are right now with all of the telephone numbers displayed on the screen somebody rise to your feet with me right now say with me i'll never be poor again say it again i will never be poor again say with me i will not be lazy again i will project financial integrity my yes will be yes my name will be nay. Now, receive the grace right now. Receive the grace for financial integrity. Receive the grace to walk, to labor with your hands the things which are profitable. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Tomorrow is the second day of this week of spiritual empathy. How many of you enjoyed yourself today before the Lord? Amen. Will you fail tomorrow? Where will you be tomorrow evening? I didn't hear you. Is your neighbor bearing witness? Nothing will stop you from being here tomorrow. As you wait on the Lord tomorrow, your strength shall be further more renewed. This exercise continues till Friday. I'd like you to make sure you don't miss it. Whatever you need to do, remember when we fast at the beginning of the month, we are clearing the ground, making a way for ourselves to enter into our possession for the month. Now, lift up your voice. Father, I receive renewal of strength by this communion tonight. I receive renewal of strength by this communion tonight. I receive